Hello and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm David Pollard. Today our focus is on European natural gas prices and my guest is Wayne Bryan, Director of European Gas Research at the London Stock Exchange Group. Dutch and British wholesale gas prices have risen. This after the White House announced it was pausing approvals of LNG export projects over their potential impact on climate change and after news that the Freeport LNG export terminal in Texas will need to temporarily close one of its three liquefaction units due to last week's freezing weather. That may have disrupted supplies to Europe from the world's largest exporter of LNG. This against the backdrop of a drone attack against US forces in Jordan and disruption to gas shipments following attacks by Houthi forces on shipping via the Red Sea. Well, to discuss this and the longer term factors impacting European natural gas prices, I'm now joined by LSEG's Wayne Bryan. Wayne, many thanks for coming today. Let's Good start afternoon. with the US announcement of a suspension in future LNG projects. How much will that impact prices in your view? Uh, it, whilst it is an important announcement, uh, currently it won't, it's not really impacting prices in the short and medium term. I think the main reason for that is current US capacity uh, is around sort of, you know, 70 to 80 million tonnes. And what we're looking at over the next sort of four years prior to the start of 2028 is an almost doubling of the capacity with all the new projects that have already been approved and are under construction. Now, the, while the announcement could be seen as being bullish by many, we have to remember that this wouldn't kick in until anything 2028 and after. And with the huge swathes of LNG projects coming online, like I mentioned, over the coming years, almost doubling the current capacity, it shouldn't have any impact on the sort of short to medium term end of the market. Post 2028, depending on where we are, yes, it could prove to be bullish, but we also shouldn't forget there are elections coming up uh, towards the end of the year. And if we do see a return of uh, Donald Trump, then perhaps we'll see that uh, directive rolled back very quickly because that's kind of against his previous policies. Also this year, the transit deal for Russian gas via Ukraine comes to an end. That deal supplies Europe with around 15 billion cubic metres of gas. Can LNG replace that without causing prices to jump? Well, that, this could be an interesting factor or development uh, as we move through the year. We and many don't see this uh, transit deal being renegotiated due to the, the current conflicts. And also, Ukraine are sort of trying to signal perhaps what they might be doing is looking at creating a corridor between Athens, there's already been a memory of understanding, which would then help them service these central uh, European markets and southern European markets. Another important factor we could see here is, as Gazprom did previously, you could see these volumes put on auction. And that will be within EU rules uh, and auctioned and auction that capacity. So that gas could still come into the market, but in a different, different way. Now, prices have been at around two year lows, but they're not back to what they were pre invasion of Ukraine. What's the longer term outlook for prices, do you think? What we're seeing now is these contracts here, sort of the near term contracts, they reflect in the current situation. Supply is robust. Demand is weak. We've seen the temperatures. I think yesterday was 19 degrees in Scotland. The outlook over the coming weeks is still relatively mild. And for the rest of the winter, which we call heating season, is ending at the end of March. And so far, there's no current cold spells. And if we look at our forecast for storages, we could see storages in northwest Europe, which account for the main storage cabins, at around 56, 57 percent. It's kind of in line with last year and close to the record high. Uh, and what that will do then, going into the summer season, which we call injection season, means the injection demand will be a lot less, a lot lower. And we actually, in our models and forecasts, see actually an acute risk of storage being full by sort of June, July, which would mean prices need to sort of adjust lower to disincentivise supply. And what about the economic backdrop? High prices caused some demand destruction. Will that be lasting or will it correct itself? Is demand going to remain low? Well, we've seen, as, as we know, industrial demand especially has taken, you know, taken a bit of a beating over the past year or so. We've got, you know, rampant inflation, high interest rates. We've got all uncertainties around input costs, which is also feeding into lower consumer demand. That's also feeding into lower industrial demand. We've seen new efficiency measures, space heating. We've seen several different factors account for that. And 
LDZ demand, so residential, is still, still quite lower than it should be when you look at certain temperatures. So overall, I think when, when looking at demand, we see a modicum of recovery. If you see, as I mentioned at the start of the show, last year we saw gas demand fall to sort of 1995 levels. This year, the IEA in their latest report gave a figure of growth of around 2.5%. And we think Europe itself will grow at least around 10%. Political uncertainty is ever present. You mentioned the US election earlier on. If you had to put your bet on the table, where would you say prices will be next winter? Whew, well, a lot can happen in these gas mines. I used to be a trader, so I'm fully aware of what could happen in the next 12 years, 12, 12 years, 12 months. But if we look at where prices are now, we'd expect if things remain equal, and I mentioned this swathe of LNG that's coming online over the next couple of years, we could see prices, you know, I'd say softer than today, but no more than 10 or so percent. And again, conversely, if geopoliticals get out of control, if we have a supply side issue, we've seen the Freeport went down for a month, etc., we could see prices a lot higher. But overall, when looking at the sort of fundamental factors of the market and assuming everything stays equal, I'd expect prices to be sort of lower than today's level for sure. OK, Wayne, we'll leave it there. Wayne Bryan, Director of European Gas Research at the London Stock Exchange Group. Many thanks for sharing your thoughts today. You're welcome. And that is your roundup of the European natural gas sector. I'm David Pollard, and this is Reuters.